Let me uh, begin the questioning, if I could. Uh, at our hearing in February of 2013, uh, Yudi Yasser, who is a pres the president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, uh, and a very outspoken uh, man against or in the combating of anti-Semitism, made a very, very important insight, provided the committee a very important insight, when he said the link between Islamism and anti-Semitism anti is rather simple. It is self-evident that supremacists from within a particular faith community will create and exploit hatred towards another faith community in order to collectively rally their own followers against a common enemy. Then he went on to explain how this crowds out a more moderate Muslim view. And he says these theo-fascists use the demonization of minorities as a populist tool to rally populations to their uh, fanaticism. Uh, he went on in great depth, and I'll put part of this back into the record because I think it's so insightful, that this, ha this is how they push out people who, uh, you know, the sadats of this world who reach across um, and, and uh, the divide and try to, you know, offer a common ground uh, with Jews and with the state of Israel. And I'm wondering if, what your thoughts might be on that uh, because it seems as if the extremists win uh, when there is not a counterforce equal or greater uh, to that effort. Secondly, um, uh, Mr. Esmussen, you mentioned Ira Foreman. Um, I would note for the record that in 2004, I sponsored the amendment that created that office and the position. Uh, and very insightful at the time, um, uh, Senator Voinovich had a bill that I sponsored on the House side. His bill passed, came over to the House. Uh, and I worked very closely uh, with members on the other side of the aisle uh, we had a bipartisan effort to create an office that doesn't just do one report, but makes it permanent time and time again to do reports, to monitor anti-Semitism, and to create this position to work within the State Department as well. Uh, and I would appreciate your thoughts on how well you think that office might be doing. But at the time, 2004, Colin Powell, who was then Secretary of State, wrote a letter against the office, against the amendment. Um, you know, he thought the Human Rights Bureau could handle the law. It was reminiscent of what um, Bill Clinton did when I authored the, uh, the Trafficking Victims Protection Act uh, and sitting right in front, uh, and it became law. He did sign it eventually. Uh, but the State Department sent over a letter saying, uh, the Assistant Secretary uh, for Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor, that it will just absorb all of this into the Human Rights Report uh, and just do some, a little more reporting on it, but don't create a lane where this will be looked at for what it is. Similarly, when we were working with the coalition, and I formed it, of the willing in the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, I was shocked at how many members of parliament said, why don't we just expand it to everything? Now, I do believe we need to combat anti-Christian beliefs and all the others. I've had hearings on it, uh, you know, what's happening. And I know, Mr. Ambassador, you have spoken out very forcibly on that. But there's a specific sense of, of disproportionality to how Jews are singled out. Look at our own FBI statistics on, on hate crimes relative to belief of uh, faith. Uh, Christians uh, far outnumber all numbers in, in the country, yet less than 10% of the FBI hate crimes are committed against Christians. Ditto for Islamists uh, or Muslims in this country. Uh, not so for Jews who make up well over 60% of all the hate crimes, even though they're only 2% of the population. It is so disproportionate, it cries out for a single focus. So, uh, and even as we were doing the, commission, the, uh, re, the uh, conferences, uh, there was always this move by the Dutch and by others to just make it about xenophobia and about other issues, always to exclude and, in my opinion, uh, uh, reduce in its focus the issue of combating anti-Semitism. So your thoughts on that, and again, on whether Ira and how well you think that committee is working. And then finally, um, I would just say, I have other questions, but I, I want to make sure my colleagues get time to answer those as well. Uh, so please, if you could begin. I, I believe uh, Congressman uh, Mr. Clausen uh, asked ask me a question. I, I understand fully your skepticism uh, towards uh, uh, getting the uh, collective uh, Muslim community in order to confront hate and prejudice. I understand it. Um, because what we see in Denmark, and I, I, I talk to many uh, Jewish leaders here, and it's, it's, it's the same all over. The Muslim community tends to be very fractioned. You will never tend to find a body, as we do in, in, within the Jewish community, and I believe if we find 
racism and hate in Jewish community, we will confront it. The problem is, it doesn't happen that often. But I, I, see, I see some changes. I mean, sometimes you, you have to also uh, look at the, the positive notes. And, and there are a few uh, uh, positive notes. Uh, uh, Muslim organizations are coming up with ideas like peace rings about synagogues. There are not many Muslims participating in these initiatives, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, I would not like to exaggerate, but there is a change. And uh, so, so when you ask what is done now, there's a lot of things in Denmark being done by the government. I mean, there's, uh, after Paris, there's a, a, a huge catalog of anti-terror legislation being uh, uh, rolled out. It seems like the murder, he was known to the system. I mean, he was, uh, uh, many people had reported him to the police intelligence again and again. He was released from jail three weeks before he killed. He went to the authorities to get help getting a flat. No one did anything. So, so I, I, there is a lot of things that the community can do. You can, you can do uh, many things uh, to spot radical behavior earlier. But also, you can also do a lot, and, and, and we're working on that in Denmark right now, uh, in order to, I mean, to, to, to spot and help people. But on the long term, nothing will change unless the mentality change. If it's, if it's legitimate to, to, uh, for religious leaders to teach that hatred towards Jews, nothing will change. And we have cases in Denmark that Imams has been doing exactly that, and it takes a lot of time for, for the uh, uh, system to come down on them. So they keep on doing these things. We are having organizations uh, 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 speaking intensely in, in hatred toward Jews, but it's very hard to outlaw them according to Danish legislation. We're looking into it, but in my opinion, on the long term, the, the solution has to come from within. Mr. Chairman and, and members of the committee, we're talking about Europe. Anti-Semitism is alive and well in this country. Starting off, it is taught. Children are born without hate. They are taught hate. Um, it's most prevalent in our universities, campuses. We have an organization called Caravan for Democracy, which is a Jewish National Fund does. We go on campuses all over. The amount of anti-Israel which morphs into anti-Jewish, has happening all over. It's happening because there is an organized group putting money into these things to put pressure on Israel, but it goes into anti-Jewish also. The media is guilty, very guilty. I watched CNN during the Gaza War. 95% of it showed people in Gaza being killed. Uh, there was almost no coverage of the 4,000 rockets going to Israel. We watch it and it has an effect. And, and anti-Semitism is also learned at the dinner table. When a mother and father are sitting there and they watch television and they watch what happens and they see reporting that is so biased and they say to each other, look at those Jews, what they're doing to people. Look how they're killing people. The children hear it and they repeat it. And what happened is that there was no understanding in media about what can be done. We watch, we monitor uh, what's happening on the internet. It is disgusting what we see and the amount of things that go on. And yet, there was no regulation against it. Um, Anti-Semitism is going to morph into anti-Christian and anti-Muslim at times. Uh, we are at the beginning of something 
that it's very, very dangerous, not only for Jews in Europe, but Jews throughout the world, as well as Christians, and for that matter, Muslims. We ask ourselves, why isn't there more Muslim moderates? Because they're scared to death. If I was a Muslim and I was a moderate, I'd be worried for, I'd be worried for my life because there is a feeling. It's not just, you know, we'll vote and see who's right. Um, there's a whole radical thing, and it's taking over the country. It's taking over what's happening. And in many ways, what's happening in Europe is the canary in the mine. And the fact is that what's happening there will be happening here very shortly unless we react. And I, I commend the committee for taking this up, but look at it not for Europe, not for Denmark, not for France. Look at it for the world and look at it what's happening in our college campuses. It's something there. We also see that in mosques, um, the amount of hatred against Jews, but also against America is there. Uh, we have monitored mosques, and we see what's going on. Mosques are a place should be for love, and understanding, help. Too often, they're places of radicalism. Uh, we hear this, we know this, we've seen it, but the fact is there are no laws against it. There's no laws against what you can say and that is the danger. There's no law that what you can say on the internet or on media, uh, and we see it. And we're just a small segment here. You have 40 countries here. Each one country can sit here and testify what's happening here. We speak among ourselves, and frankly, we feel powerless. And I think if I asked every person, what's the one place we look towards we look towards the United States. We look towards the United States for the help and the understanding because it's the one country that stands up for, for religious rights in a very strong way. We need the Congress. We need your help. We need people, not only this committee, but a whole looking at what laws. You mentioned about Ira Foreman, what went on. Here's one person that you try to get in. You had, you had people fighting it. Um, there is a feeling also that people don't want to see this. They want, they, they want to stay away from it. Um, we had a situation in California recently where a girl wanted to join an organization, and because she was Jewish and was part of a Jewish organization, she was denied it. There should have been a huge outcry, and there wasn't. And again, um, Marjorie Cookman is fighting a battle He's fighting in battle. Uh, the French government is there, but there's very little he can do. If you have six million Muslims, even if 1% of them, um, and using math without a computer, it's still six, uh, 60,000 people who could be radical. What do you do about that? There's no laws about it. Canada has just started to look at different laws that can be done. We must have type of things here in this country. It must be a chance for everybody to turn around and say, this is the model. These are what, what should be done. And we're allowing it to happen. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I want to, to say also that anti-Semitism is not the problem of the Jews. It's the problem of the society. And it's not neither a European problem. It's a world problem. And we are in a war with the jihadism. Jihadism is, is the, Islam, the fanatic Islam. And you were the first victims of that phenomenon on 9-11. I think that 9-11 was the first step of that war. We are in a war, and I wish you asked, somebody asked among you, what can you do? First of all, you have to realize that you are in a state of war. And secondly, you have to react at that state of war one of the things which you, could, you can do is to see to it that internet stops being a school to educate jihadism. Thank you. Mr. Deutsch. Uh, 